All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, it's great to see a wonderful crowd for a great exhibition and a great artist. Um, my name is Eric Keplinger. I'm the Chief Preparator and Operations Manager here at Mocha GA. Um, welcome to tonight's Artist Talk featuring, featuring Mocha GA's 2021-2022 Working Artist Project Fellow, Kevin Cole. The Mocha GA Working Artist Project is an awards program to support established visual artists of merit who reside in the metropolitan Atlanta area. This initiative provides an unparalleled level of support for individual artists, expands the museum's mission, and promotes Atlanta as a city where artists can live, work, and thrive. Mocha GA's Working Artist Project project program is generously supported by the Charles Lordens Foundation, the Antonori Foundation, and the AEC Trust with additional support from the National Endowment for the Arts. This year's round of Working Artist Project Fellows was selected by Jordan Carter. He's a curator at the Dia Art Foundation in New York. Kevin Cole holds multiple graduate degrees in fine art and arts education, and within the last 32 years, he's received 27 grants and fellowships, 66 awards in art, 51 teaching awards, and his artwork has been featured in more than 490 exhibitions throughout the United States and abroad. Some of his more recent awards include the 2020 Governor's Award for the Arts and Humanities in the state of Georgia, and the Art Inspiration Award by the National Society Incorporation for his dedication to students' achievements. Additionally, Kevin has created more than 45 public works, uh, has been published widely, and is included in more than 4,000 public, private, and corporate collections, both natural, nationally and internationally, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> The current exhibition, Where Do We Go From Here, features new artwork continuing the artist's exploration into themes of gerrymandering and voting rights. Tonight, we're also excited to have Greg Head with us for a conversation with Kevin about the work in this fantastic and timely exhibition. Greg is CEO and Senior Marketing Strategist with SmartThink Marketing Group. In addition to his 25 years working with Fortune 500 companies and advertising agencies and strategic consulting and market research, Atlanta is fortunate to include Greg on many of its cultural boards. Some of these include Art Papers, Burnaway, the Atlanta Contemporary, and Hambage Center, just to name a few. Greg is a passionate arts advocate and arts writer who has been published in Arts ATL and the International Review of African American Art, among other publications. He's been a guest speaker on art at the Diggs Gallery, Winsome-Salem University, the Driscoll Center, University of Maryland, and the African Diaspora Art Museum of Atlanta. Attention. Um, and without further ado, Kevin Cole and Greg Head. Thanks, Eric. Really appreciate it. But before we get started, I'd like to give Annette Cole Skelton a round of applause for just having this. So with that, Kevin and I go a long way back. And um, I've been blessed to see his work evolve over time. And as it's taken its various turns and uh, its various shapes, um, I've always just been impressed by what's been going on. And I think this particular show is, 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 is really um, a bit different than shows that you've seen in the past. Um, but I'm going to take us all back for a minute. And I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, Kevin, many people have heard the story, but many people haven't heard the story. Talk about how this all started for you. Well, I think that the, the idea and the concept came about, I always tell the story that when I graduated from high school, I didn't want to go to rest the boat. My grandfather, Sam Cole Sr., he was 91 years old. And I kept saying, it's not, it's not going to make any difference. So he, he owned a lot of property in rural Arkansas. And he, was, he, he drew me a, a map and told me to go to this certain area on this property. And I went there and I came back. I told him I had this scary feeling. He told me African Americans, they were lynched by their neckties on their way to vote. And in 1990, there was a book came out called 
with our sanctions that verified a lynching that took place there. Then I went to the Legacy Museum and saw the markers of a man he knew that was lynched close to his property. So the necktie has been a reincurring event in my work. And later on, I started, do, I started incorporating the shapes of scarf shapes to, to recognize the contribution of women. I was doing a visiting artist in Iowa at the Des Moines Art Center. So I asked these kids to name it one major African-American female who had made major contributions to America, or one that they could name was Oprah Winfrey. So I, so I had them to do research on Catherine Dunham, Billie Holiday, and in their time capsules were their research papers. So I started incorporating the, the concept of women being a part of the major struggle of civil rights and, and, and everything else. Now many people, just to keep it going in that vein, mm -hmm. know you for the work, know you for bending wood. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't know of any other artist who bend plywood like you do. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Ancient black man's secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now given that that's a secret, given that it is an ancient black man's secret, you progress from that to using different materials. Right. Just talk a little bit about that. Well, every material I use has to do with some type of event that occurred in my life. I was supposed to go to New York on September 11th with Eric Mack. That morning, I decided I wasn't going to go. The next thing you know, there were the, there were the, the uh, buildings, uh, there, there were the planes going into the building. So a friend of mine by the name of Bob Stevens sent me a photograph of a little bowl holding a piece of uh, steel and tar paper. So I started working on aluminum and, and uh, tar paper as my protest against September 11. And you think about it, the planes are made of metal. So, so that being said, you know, I look at this show, and if any of you have seen any of Kevin's other work, um, it's infused with just vibrant color. Mm -hmm. in, in, in this particular show, I, I, I don't see much color at all. Can you tell me about what's going on here? Well, I started in 2005. There was a, I started to do a process of mapping. And mapping in, involved with you know places that you go, or places or pieces on the map that that you have, or places on the map that you felt certain events happen. So what I did was I started to map the path of, of the storm in New Orleans, the, where the storm hit. And so what I was I had a lot of frat brothers I was going to see, traveling back and forth, and I collected a lot of the debris then, and I started to incorporate that. So so when we talked about doing, I mean, it's like every piece leads you to another piece. So then when I applied for the Working Artist Project, and let me say this, I applied for seven years. Seven years. Seven is the biblical number, okay? <laughs> so, um, Amen. <laughs> so, once I start, so once I applied, I had the idea of what I wanted to do already, already in mind. So I'm like, what about looking at, I never heard of gerrymandering. I got a three degrees, I was a Rhodes Smith scholar, never heard of gerrymandering, that wasn't taught at school. True. So I started looking at the idea, what is gerrymandering? And gerrymandering is where, uh, uh, um, number one, you're dealing with the idea of the census, where they take the, the population, and whichever group have, ha have the most uh, have the most in that area, they, they'll turn around and that say that the Republicans have, have the, the, the most votes in that area, or, or the, mo the most people, rather. And what they would do is they, could, they control and, and, and they draw the maps where uh, the, the representatives would come from that area. So then I started looking, looking at that and I read, there were two books I was reading. Um, Dr. Ron Walters, who was a uh, a professor at Howard University, and, and later on I found out he's one of my frat brothers. He did a book called When Freedom Is Not Enough. And, uh, and then Carol Anderson did a book called One, one Vote, N No Vote. And I, was, I kept reading about it and kept reading about it, and I'm like, okay, what are they trying to say? But when it came down to it, everything was going back to voting, back to voting, back to voting. So then um, I said, well, I wanted to, 
do a series of works that, that they were mapping, but I wanted to do it in my style. So I was cutting out the shape of each state. And I looked on the, the um, mapping of 2016, which we know who won the election then. Mm -hmm. A lot of things started there. So then I said I wanted to collect dirt from those states. I called my friends. They thought I, they, they thought I was crazy. I said, the only thing I need is some dirt. How much? I said, just give me some dirt. <laughs> and I wanted to take the shavings that I carved out of each piece, mix it with the dirt, and attach it to the piece of artwork. Okay. And so those pieces are the pieces that are lined up on the wall well, to my right. Right. And which is called. The, the, the Dirty South. And it's called The Dirty South because I know Goody Mob <laughs> has a song about The Dirty South, but talk to me about your interpretation of The Dirty South. Dirty what South. you wanted to mean? Well, there, there's a lot of it. You know, I came, I'm, I'm from Arkansas. That's where I'm from. And I, I remember signs saying the N word, don't let the sun catch you. Okay? And when I started looking at in 2013, uh, the, uh, the Atlanta. The, the, I'm sorry, the Alabama Historical Society commissioned 13 artists to do a piece on the 50th anniversary of the Freedom Riders. And when doing the 50th anniversary of Freedom Riders, I created a, a mobile. I found out that a lot of the group lynchings took place in, in Alabama. Arkansas and Mississippi had the most lynchings. Now, when you say group lynchings, what do you mean? Four or five men mm. hung. Mm. And then you know the story of, of, of Emmett Till. And, and things of that nature, but, but that's where the, the title of the Dirty South, in each state, you know, I started re researching the, 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 um, the jury measuring there, but then I started researching the things that were happening in, happening in, in those states. And I want to go back to something before we go forward, mm -hmm. and that's back to mapping. Talk to me about the big piece in the back on all, my left. Okay, all title in politics is the cover-up. The night I received the Weapon Artist Project, I'd done a few sketches. And I know my wife thought I had lost my mind because I <laughs> dropped off and I, I went to my studio. <laughs> That's not unusual, right? No, it's not unusual. No, that she thinks you're losing your mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I went, to, I, went to my, well, I went to my studio and I started doing research. And underneath those ties and, uh, ties and um, uh, I need to tie the scarves. Are uh, four counties where gerrymandering is prevalent? That there was Forsyth County, Glenn County, Lumpkin County, and Floyd County. So it's a cover-up. And I asked, um, I, I asked about, I think it was about twenty-five art, twenty-five art educators, and twenty-five educators. What is gerrymandering? They had never heard of, heard of gerrymandering. It's not taught in school. So when you think about, and that's mapping, we talked about the gerrymandering, why does this make sense for you to speak about tonight? The idea of voting. You know, you look at people who died for you to vote. And, which, and what goes on, if you, if you look at the book, I, I, um, everything kept going back to voting. So I asked my friends, I said, Ask your parents and grandparents what was their experience in trying to vote. One, I know my grandfather told me that, that he was asked how many bubbles in a bar of soap. Okay. Then, and I asked my, matter of fact, t t t Tony Lohot, one of my good friends who, who fabricated the ballot boxes, he said, uh, my mom said she was asked to recite the Constitution. Right. So when we're talking about this, just so that everybody's clear, as black people went to vote yes. in the 50s and 60s, yes. maybe the 40s as well, yeah. they were asked a set of questions yes. that were oh, actually to impossible yeah, to answer. To, to answer. Yes. And, and so you found these questions how? Because, well, I found them because, well, I found the people first. Okay. Talk I, to I, me. And I would ask my friends to ask their parents and grandparents. The one that struck me the most was, well, he, he told me not to mention his name, so I'm going to call him James Johnson. He was 91 years old, and he was scared for me to even mention his name at 91. He said that um, he was asked how many bullets was in a five-pound box. The clerk entered the bullet house and said, 
How many bullets in the five pound box? He looked at me, and then, and then he said, okay, if I had three house N-words and seven house N-words, I mean, and seven field N-word, how many bullets would it take to kill all seven of those? Mm. Okay, yeah. And then I asked uh, the one that's in the show with the black eyed peas, um, her name was Anna Mae Park, and she said she was asked, how many black eyed peas in the bag? And another one from Ernestine Bradley from Oconee, Florida, which was a part of Rosewood, I did a piece called Conversation with the Proud Boys. She said every three days before, the, uh, before voting, there would be a series of cross burnings. Then the next day, there would be a series of, uh, of nooses hanging ar around the poles. Then that next day, there would be a sign that said, it best not be that you be hanging around here to vote. So all of this deals with voter suppression. Voter suppression. Either really very blatantly as it relates to lynchings, right. those kinds of things, but also gerrymandering itself. Right. Is, is a real serious form of, of, of voter suppression. Right. So, so talk to me a little bit more about when you start thinking about this, what I, other ideas, if any, came to mind? And, and again, how did you come up with these particular um, works? I call them banners, and banners are used to give out information. So I, I was headed that way anyway, but I, I, I wasn't going to have the, 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 the court cases in them at, 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 at all. I, I was planning to make them more colorful, and I, I started to use the rod as a cane, symbolized the, 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 the rod symbolized the cane my grandfather used to draw in the sand. And you got to, the whole idea of the tundra. If you notice, the tundra circle is in a lot of the pieces. The reason it's there is I wanted to focus on the idea, at this time, African American uh, were being killed by the cops. So using that circle to focus on that. So if you look at the states, for instance, Florida, uh, the, one of the slogans that, that, that our former president used was make America great again. I put make America responsible. Okay, different court cases and different things that deal with those states are, are on those banners. And you think about Georgia, the uh, John Lewis Voting Rights Pact have not been passed yet, okay? If you notice, that's in contour. You can barely see it, but you see the the the, the uh, John Lewis is is bold. And in each state, there was several events. And you look at in North Carolina, it says "stronger together, yet so far apart." And on on at the top is 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 1898. That was the Wilmington uh, riots that happened that happened there, which were. If you notice, that was the part of Black, Black Wall Street in North Carolina. So there's a lot of symbolism in bringing it up to date in all of the pieces. Now you mentioned court cases. What are those court cases related to? To each state. They're related to things that happen in each state and, and how, um, and then trying to, trying to, trying to, try, we're trying to deal with allowing African Americans to actually vote. Okay, so it's not just gerrymandering. No. But it's just court cases yes. about these people being, their votes being suppressed. Right. Or, or they've been, um, their rights being taken right. away. Right. And, and you notice all these states are red states. So this piece is called Creating Obstacles. Mm. Creating Obstacles. Every little thing about it, in, in Georgia, they're doing a lot to keep people from, from voting. And they're doing a lot in, in every state. Example. A lot of people don't know, but in Wisconsin, they trying to they trying to repel the 19th Amendment, which allowed women to vote. John Gibbs said that they need to go back and, and look at that, the 19th Amendment. And you mentioned some things are happening in, in each of those other states. Quickly, we'll do that, and then I'll open it up. And that looks like Arkansas. What's going on? Uh, Arkansas. Oh, shit. that's my state, but it's a disaster. <laughs> I mean, you. I mean, you talking about. Uh, you talking. I mean, I, I was just in a conversation with my, with, with my, with my art dealer about. You know, just I like I say, I remember a sign that said, "Don't let the sun catch you." Okay, 
I remember in, in junior high, they, they made all the black football players get down on the bus going through certain t towns. And, and, and now, is there anything going on now in Arkansas? There, there are a number of, what is voting between who's going to be the governor there is Sarah Huckabee and there's, a, and there's, a, and there's also a sharp young man named is, is Chris Jones. He went to MIT. Sarah Huckabee is saying instead of debating, now she got throat cancer. Mm. She's saying she got throat cancer. Well, we pray that she gets over her throat cancer real <laughs> Amen. soon. Amen. This is Alabama, right? Uh, no, no, that's Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin. Wisconsin. What's going on with Wisconsin? Well, Wisconsin, it was one of those swing states as well. And by swing states, you mean? M meaning the states that determine who, who is going to be president. Okay. And, and so these are tondos that are made by... Intaglios. Intaglios. Yeah. A print, printing. A, a printing process that I, I went back on top of. And, they, and these are entitled living between the black and white lines. Tell me just a little more? That's all I need to say. Okay, fine. fine. <laughs> we'll keep it moving. We'll keep it moving. So, so we have the states in those condos, as you call them, but in the back, we have, it looks like they are, cut, they are out. cut out. Talk to me about that. I wanted to emphasize the shapes first, the shapes, the, the shapes on, on the inside. And they're called All Eyes On Me. It's spelled the eyes as, um, it's Tupac, E E Y E. I think it was E Y E E E S. Black people. Mm. What, they would determine what happened in those states, and they were so shocked about uh, a Wisconsin when that happened. A large percentage of African Americans were, were uh, uh, they turned out to vote, and Pennsylvania is one of those swing states. Okay. And what's the other one back there? Uh, you got it. Pennsylvania. Ohio. O Ohio, which is a lot of things that are happening there. There are several people that are, that are there. And then the big ballot box is called Black to the Future. Black to the Future. Black to the Future. If we don't vote, it's going to be black. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be going back. To the future. Not to the future, yeah. but just back. Black to, yeah. Black to the Future. Okay. Yeah. That being said, you want to talk a little bit about this book? Yeah. The, the book... Uh, what we decided to, to do was to create something that was going to be a part of history. And, you know, you got the ballot. There are several pieces that are not in the show, but they're in the book. And they were, they were springboards. And, and you have all of the ballot boxes in the book. They, they are in color. And you have everybody's story of what they said about it. You know, they were asked, how many gumballs in the gumball machine? Okay, you have. Uh, you, uh, I mean, you have how many? Uh, how many? How many? How many jelly beans in the jar? So, the book is. I mean, the book is about you know about a lot of things that are not in the show. I wanted to make the show. As I start to listen to a lot of the the, the elderly people talk, they always had faith. So I, I dealt with biblical numbers. There are five over there. Three here. Three here. One. Three one one one. So, if someone isn't biblically um, astute, See, right. you want to talk about that just a minute? Well, because because all, everybody I talk to, that with the elderly people, you, know, you talk to them, and they keep you on the phone <laughs> for a lot, a long time, and they would say, you know what? But I still got faith in this country. I still have faith. And you look at what society is saying about. Um, uh, the fear of brown people t t taking over. And this, this one man said something, anyway, he said, even if it, if it happened, I'm not going to do them like they did us. Hmm. With that said, Question. in the interest of time, I'll open it up to questions. And does anyone have a question for Mr. Cole? Um. I'm curious when you let go of the color for this um, uh, exhibit, were there any difficulties that you had in still expressing yourself? And if not, um, what strengths did you think, do you think it brought to the experience? That's a good question. I had a lot of difficulty in terms of color. I only went to color to, to do the ballet boxes. 
And on, on one ballot box, you, you will find bullets. And, and on those bullets, are African American will be killed by the police. George Floyd, uh, Bri 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 Brianna Taylor, and a couple other people. But it, it was hard. It was hard letting go of the color because that's what I'm known for. But then I, I always think about my professor, late Terrence Corbin, saying, you got to, you got to turn some things loose. And I found the metal in, in terms of black, white, and everybody has said, who's seen the show, I was so shocked there was no color. And the color in my earlier pieces, it, it, it was the cover up. Because if you notice, all of my titles did with something about faith, hope, dreams, and, and things of that nature. But it still was about the underlying issue of the neckties being there, or the idea of, um, of mapping. Any other questions? Any other questions? Biggest influence, especially in the earlier years. It was my, uh, I, I did my undergraduate at, at University of Oxford Pine Bluff, which is a historically black college. Terrence Corbin, Henry Linton, Ernest Davidson, and, jo and the late John Howard as well. And l lately, uh, my, my mentor, who, who the book is uh, dedicated to, is Sam Gilliam, who was a big influence in my life. Hi, I'm excited to see your work. I know you have had some experience with teaching young people. I'd just be interested to know your perspective on how to relay some of these stories and sort of the importance of voting to this next generation who may feel like you felt at 18, it doesn't matter, my voice isn't heard in the political process. Like how do we relay this same information you're trying to tell us through your work to you know our current generation because it matters today? It's funny you said that because I was, on, I was on the plane to San Francisco, and you know, you get on the plane, you want to put your headphones on, and you don't want to be bothered, okay? And, that was, and I was sketching, and this young man asked me, I told him I was an artist, and I told him what the work dealt with about voting. He said, man, that's not going to matter. I said, well, okay, voting, the only thing you got in, in, in life is one vote, okay? I said, that vote can determine a, a whole lot. So I asked, him, I asked him if he had any kids. He said, yeah, I, I, I have two. I said, legislation is a thing that turns everything around. I said, just that one, your vote can, can make a lot of difference. And he kept saying he never thought of it. So, so then we, we went on and on. I said, well, what are you, what are, what are your future for your kids? I, I said, what, what are you concerned about? The economy? I, well." High gas prices. He said, well, how can you change that? I said, get somebody in the office that's going to help deal with those things. Just that, that one vote. I said, if your vote didn't count, why would they be so, so, uh, so, uh, so, I uh, uh, want to oppress your vote? How has the art world responded to your use of art in this social justice format? How, how have they responded? I Georgia specifically. I haven't got a review yet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, there have been several uh, black magazines I've covered, and actually Forth Magazine in January wrote a, uh, wrote a nice article about the show coming up, but in, 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 in Atlanta, it hadn't been touched. We'll just say yet. Yeah. Not yet. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Tom. Uh, do you ever find um, difficulty in sleeping <laughs> when you're trying to convey your messaging through your work? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, once you get the idea, and that's Tony Lowe. T Tony, he fabricated a, a lot of the ballot boxes, and we talked together at Tri-Cities. We started the Magnet Program, okay? And, uh, well, we talked a lot, but, but we talked, that's one thing. And, once you get an idea, you know, you, you're there. And I'm fortunate that, that my studio is not far from, from, from my home. And you said that's this, unfortunate? I said it's fortunate. It's fortunate, trust me. <laughs> so, um, and, and I'm fortunate to have three studios on four acres of land. I, I can decide on which studio I want, I want to work in, whether I want to do metal this day, whether I want to do painting this day, 
but we're going to fabricate some images. And Derek Phillips, stand up, Derek. Okay. Some people say that mentorship doesn't work. Derek been with me since he was 12 years old. He's 40, 40 what? Three, 45. They say mentorship doesn't work. It works. He's my right hand man. He's been with me on every public art project. I've done over, over 45 public art. He's been with me on every project. And he's also an outstanding artist. Would you like to recognize um, some of your other people that you mentored? Uh, I, I can say I mentored. Uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, I work with George. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, Derek, Derek. Is, 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 is Derek uh, uh, Clinton, he, he, he's an artist. Uh, well, I tell you what, would all the artists raise your hand? And I, don't, I want to say th thank you for coming out. Would all the artists raise your hand? And a special guest recognition to your gallerist? Oh, Gabo Hearns out of Little Rock, Arkansas. We, I've been with her for almost 20, almost th 30 years. And lastly, I'll shamelessly plug your book for you. Um, right there at the entrance, you can purchase a copy of this book. Um, what's the name of it again? Uh, Kevin Co. Where, Where do we go, go from, from here? here? For $35. Yes. And so, um, we again, thank you for coming out. Really appreciate you taking the time to see the work. And I'll let you close this out. Goodbye. <laughs>